Hi everybody, earlier we looked at the tree data structure and learned all about nodes, edges, and the various landmarks that make navigating and identifying points in the tree much easier. In this video, we're going to branch out, okay, get it, branch out trees, you know, yeah, it's, a, it's gonna be a fun one, and go deeper by looking at a very specific implementation of the tree data structure. We're gonna look at the binary tree. Now, before we go on, if you want a friendly yet comprehensive look at data structures and algorithms, my best-selling book on this topic, Algorithms, Absolute Beginner's Guide, is just what you need. Look for it in physical bookstores and online bookstores. A link below or get search in Google to learn more about it. Now, on the surface, a binary tree looks just like a regular tree. And just like trees go, it allows us to store data in a hierarchical manner. Now, what makes a binary tree different than a regular tree? There are three rules that kind of need to be followed for a specific tree to become known as a binary tree. So right now, here we have a binary tree example. And if you kind of look at it, it looks very much like our, our regular tree. You know, we kind of mentioned it earlier. Now you can visually see what this looks like. You can see there's a node, there's a root node, there's some nodes and edges, and you have a bunch of children. But the, the three rules that this particular tree highlights, and we'll look at how those rules are applied, are as follows. Each node can have zero children, one child, or two children. The three can only have a single root node, and there can be only one path from a node to, to a node from the root. So no multiple paths here. I will walk through what each of these rules look like in practice. So the first rule is that a binary tree can only have at most two children, either no children or at most two children, but nothing beyond that. And so in this case, you can see that the node E has three children, G, H, and I. So definitely a valid tree, but not a valid binary tree. So that's a problem. The second rule is that a binary tree must have only a single root node. And here you can see that both A and AA are considered root nodes here because they both start off without any parent of their own. And that's not applied. That's not allowed in a binary tree world. So only a single root node. Now we get to the last rule. The last rule is that there can be only one path in the root to any node in the tree. This is to avoid cycles and duplication. And so here we can see in this example, you know, let's say that node D is our destination. It's the final leaf node that we really care about. There are multiple ways to get there from it. You can kind of see that you can go from a path involving B and D directly or B, E and D, and we don't want that. So ideally we want only one path here. So it's either A, B and D or A, B, E and D where D is a child of E, but not in this kind of an arrangement where where you have multiple ways to get to node D. And so as long as we have a tree that doesn't break any of these three rules, we have a binary tree. Now a binary tree, as we learn more about it and we start seeing it in many real world examples, will have specific terminology that describe the types of binary trees that we run into. And so we'll talk about some of those variants right now. The first one is known as a full binary tree. And this is also known as a strict binary tree or proper binary tree. So you ever see strict binary tree or proper binary tree? It's referring to the full binary tree that we see here. And what this means is that every non-leaf node has a full two children on it. So you can see that here, you know, A is the root node, has B and C, full children. B has two no two children, D and E. And F and G, of course, are the children of, of E by itself. Now, if F had just one child, for example, right, then it would no longer be considered a full binary tree. It would be incomplete in that sense. A complete binary tree is one where all the rows of the nodes are filled where each parent has two children, except for the last row of nodes, which of course we can't do that. So for the last row of nodes, there are some rules on how nodes should appear. If the last row has any nodes, those nodes will be filled continuously, starting from the left with no gaps. You know, here you can see how A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, pretty good. And then we have the children of D being H and I. If the, when, when the last row rule applies here, where if there happens to be a gap, it wouldn't be allowed. Like for example, take a look at this node right here. Notice that in this case, D has one child H, E has one child I. And it really should be that I should be a child of D to make the whole, you know, whole node actually be appropriately complete. And in this case, it's not. So you know, just keep that in mind if you ever look at a tree and when you're being asked, is this a complete binary tree? This one is not. This one absolutely is because every layer of nodes has their full two children appropriately defined. And the next binary tree variation is known as the perfect binary tree. And a perfect binary tree 
you know, its name is a little bit confusing. It's not really a perfect binary tree. All it means is that every level of the tree is fully filled with nodes. So as a consequence of that requirement, all leaf nodes are also at the same level. So you won't have any uh, you know, situations where you're, you have one particular node having additional layers of children. In this case, you can see that every node has an appropriate number of two children and each of them have two children of their own and no awkwardness or unbalancedness in how they're represented. The next one is a balanced binary tree. And a balanced binary tree is one where the height of the left and right subtree of each node is not more than one apart. And here's an example, and here's what it means. Notice that if you go to A, you have a left subtree starting with B, and a left subtree starting with C. And you can see that the height difference between them, you know, is not more than one apart. It's only G is the only one up, out here. It's like apart by one. Imagine if G had a child and went below, it would no longer be balanced. And the idea is that, and we will look at this much later, is that when you're now navigating through your binary tree to find items, you don't ever want to be in a situation where one part of the tree is so long and so deep, you're spending a lot of time going through some items there, as opposed to having an approach where you're not going too deep in any one area, any path you take has an equal likelihood of you know, helping you, in this case, find something you're looking for, as opposed to just going down literally a rabbit hole. The last uh, binary tree variant we'll look at is the degenerate binary tree. And in a degenerate binary tree, each parent node has only child node. And this means that, as you can see from this visualization, our binary tree acts very much like a linear data structure, very much like an array where all the nodes are connected in a single path. And any advantages a tree like data structure provides, they're fully lost, which is why we call it a degenerate you know, binary tree, the degenerate classifier is applied. Now, as with any data structure, a common operation for us will be to look at how we add data, remove data, or look for some data. And we will look at some of these as part of looking at further variations of trees. You know, the binary tree is one variation. There are other more specific variations where we actually will spend time looking at how to make data manipulation and representing data in a tree more possible. And so with that, Learning data structures and algorithms, you know, it's not the easiest of things. I get it. It's hard. You know, it's confusing. Sometimes it's really boring as well. So as a friendly community willing to help, check out the community at forum.krupa.com where I and others will be happy to help you out. And before we wrap this up, here's some quick actions you can take to go deeper into the topics we talked about or just to keep up with all the content I share on a regular basis. And with that, I will see you all next time.